This week on El Cara Ham Radio, we're going to take a look at running a successful net. Does your club run a net? And if you're starting a new club, how could you begin to run a net yourself? Stay tuned as we go through the basics of running a net. Weather net at 8.30 p.m. tonight. Repeater I-D-N-4-L-C-A. CQ, CQ, CQ. This is KY4BDP for the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association's WeatherNet. We hold this net each Sunday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time using the 146.880 repeater with a tone of 77 hertz located in Ingle, Kentucky. Well, we just started the WeatherNet. Let's get into some of the reasons for having a net. So why should you have a club-based net? And, and who can run that net if your club decides to start a net? And what are two types of nets that you can start easily? And then we'll also check into how to have a successful net. And lastly, the key ingredient here is you want it to be fun. You don't want it to be something that is drawn out or isn't interesting to your members. So let's take a look at the next snippet of our net, and then we'll get into each of these topics. The objective of this net is to share weather-related information or issues and to share other amateur radio information that you might wish to bring to the crew tonight. This is a directed net, and your net control is KY4BDP. My name is Brian, and I'm in Somerset, Kentucky. Any stations that are experiencing an emergency or need to pass along priority traffic may call now. So why have a club-based net? Well, one of the first things is to practice good communication skills and etiquette. You don't want to be rude, but you also want to be welcoming to those of you, uh, to those that participate with your net. And you want to involve your club members in the hobby. One of the things that's easy to do is to get your FCC license, technician, general, or uh, advanced, uh, extra, and then just not do anything with it. And with a local repeater-based net, you can actually practice, you can learn who's in your club, you can learn call signs. That was one of the hardest things I had to do was learn different people's call signs. And over time, you develop a memory for those call signs. It's also to teach new members that come along. You're going to add new members to your club because they see these activities, and the net is a way for them to practice and learn that same etiquette and to learn about each of the members and what they bring to the club. And probably one of the most important things about a local net is to pass along information that's important to the club, events that are on the calendar and weather and emergency-related types of topics. Let's move now to the next snippet of the net. Tonight, we have the following announcements, and folks, hold on your hats. We've got quite a few tonight. Wednesday, we have our weekly Dairy Queen get-together, 8 o'clock a.m., South 27. And uh, we usually get together and talk ham radio as well as just about anything else we can think of between 8 and usually between 8 and 10 o'clock that morning. Dairy Queen, South 27. Thursday, we have our 10-meter emergency net. This is a net that will be utilizing HF. So for you uh, folks that have a tech license, uh, you can participate with this net. Even though it is HF, it is 10 meters, and it's in the uh, area of the band that you are allowed to participate in. Also, this uh, uh, coming up Monday, so it'll be uh, today, Sunday, tomorrow, hands-on with El Cara Monday night. We'll have a Zoom session. It'll be a Zoom session only with Corey Gibson of DX Engineering. And the topic will be Invis, Near Vertical Incident Skywave, and how we might use it more effectively. That'll be Monday night, tomorrow, and I'll be sending out the Zoom link for all members of the club. Friday, the 21st, we have our VE testing session. 
we've already got folks signed up. So if you are a VE and can help out with the uh, grading of the exams, we uh, would greatly appreciate you coming out to uh, 6.30 on Friday, 6.30 p.m. Friday, uh, at the First Christian Church. And uh, we will see if we can't uh, give some folks a new tech license if they pass, general or amateur extra. That'll be Friday the 21st, 6.30 p.m. at the First Christian Church. Alrighty, so now we've got some of those announcements out of the way. Who can run a net? Well, anyone with a tech license can run a net, and probably the two most common nets for local repeaters is on 2 meters and 70 centimeters. There are other bands that can be used as well, but those are the two most commonly used. Uh, HF has a lot of nets, and one of the things you learn, especially once you get your general license, is that you can participate on many of those HF nets on 80 and 40 meters. And then many local clubs have their area nets for their local members, and anyone with a tech license can participate typically in those nets. Now let's move on to another portion of our local weather net here at El Cara. All righty, silence for now. Let's go ahead and move on. So first group of folks that we want to get into tonight will be our short timers. Folks, short timers are folks who uh, want to get onto the roster for tonight's net, but don't have any comments, and, uh, but they still want to participate, which is perfectly fine. If you're a short timer tonight, want to check in with no comments, please call KY4BDP now. We'll pause for just a moment, and I missed somebody as I was typing down some of the other call signs. So if I don't call your uh, call sign, uh, just call back here in just a moment. I had KY4TB, Tommy, N8LM, Mr. Joe, KY4CKP, Chris, KY4LRLM, Robbie, and KO4IZS, Mike. Again, I missed somebody there. Please call back. Please call KY4 BDP and be, be a little bit slower so I can get your call sign. Alrighty, so we've gotten some of those short timers out of the way during the net. Let's uh, talk about what are the two types of nets that uh, El Cara does. Well, we have repeater-based nets on two meters and uh, we also have a simplex net. We'll do a different uh, video for the simplex net. It's a lot of fun. And El Cara has four nets a week. We have two-meter weather and emergency nets on Sunday and Tuesday. We also have a 10-meter emergency net so that uh, our members can also utilize their HF rigs for a local net. And we sometimes get folks uh, not so local uh, because it is, in fact, 10 meters. And depending on propagation, we may get folks hundreds of miles away. And uh, as I mentioned, we also have a two-meter simplex net. Again, that'll be a separate video. Each of our nets allows technicians and above to participate, and that way we're not trying to be exclusionary. And it allows the members to, to participate weekly, multiple times a week as well. Passes along club information, as you heard the announcements a little while ago, and if an emergency were to arise, it allows somebody to break in, and then we can try to help them uh, as uh, Ham Radio has always been there for. Let's go into another snippet of the net. Alrighty, we'll pause there. We picked up two more. W4PBW, Paul, thanks for checking in. And KY4KAT, Robert, out in Nancy. Thanks for checking in, Robert. All right, folks, we're going to move on. I want to thank all the short timers for checking in tonight. And uh, if you're still a short timer and haven't checked in yet, uh, we will have a call a little bit later. Let's move on to battery and emergency powered stations. If you're on a battery or emergency powered station, Please call KY4BDP now. KM4ZXT. Finish the go box just in time for the icing snow. This is Doug. 
Alrighty, we will pause right there for battery and emergency powered stations. Sounds like Doug has put together a little battery go uh, unit there, KM4ZXT. Doug, do you have any comments for the net tonight? Roger that. Yes, uh, <laughs> that was one of the first projects Chris and I did as well. And it's a lot of fun to put together a battery box. Uh, and it doesn't have to be overly uh, complicated. Uh, the one that I put together, and I think Chris did as well, uh, used a regular uh, uh, deep cycle AGM battery. But a lot of folks use the lithiums these days, although a little bit more expensive at times. But it depends on how many amp hours you went for. Doug, thanks for checking in tonight. KM4ZXT. Do we have any more battery or emergency powered stations that would like to check in to the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association's WeatherNet, please call KY4BDP now. And we've got those battery and emergency powered stations taken care of. So how do you have a successful net? Well, the first rule for a successful net is you have to be consistent. It needs to be the same day of the week, the same you know date on a monthly schedule but it needs to be the same consistent never miss and it needs to be at the same time if at all possible that way your members can put it on their calendar and it can become a habit in addition you want to be as professional as possible you're representing on not only yourself but also your club um, schedule your nets again often so that your members can count on them either daily weekly or monthly we do weekly nets. Uh, there are other nets that are daily. It just depends on how often you want to run the net, and uh, really your members will dictate some of that because a lot of times they're not going to be interested in a daily net, but maybe a weekly net. Uh, have a script that you can follow as net control operator. You'll notice on one of my screens I'm reading from a script, and uh, I will sometimes deviate a little bit from that script, but it keeps me in a nice pocket so that I'm not losing where I'm at. And then the other thing is to, again, keep it simple and don't add unnecessary information. And make sure everyone feels appreciated that comes to your net. Uh, you know, thank them for participating. Ask them to come back and join in on the fun at a later date or at the next net. We actually have all of our nets on our calendar on our website, and we also, in at the bottom of all of our videos in the description field, we have all of our nets listed too. So anybody who's watching this video can come and participate in one of our nets, possibly through Echolink, for instance, if you're not in our local area. And then the last thing to probably mention here is try to have more than one net control operator for a net. This allows them to take turns, like you might have Randy run the net on every fourth Sunday and John run a net every second Tuesday of the month. But this prevents burnout, and that way one person isn't always doing a net. So ask other members to join in. Sometimes they're a little reluctant, but it's a lot of fun. And again, just have them do it once a month just to kind of ease them into the process. And then before you know it, you'll have a half a dozen members helping you out with the net. Let's go to our last snippet of the last weather net we ran as a club. Well, that looks like it'll wrap it up tonight. Uh, around, uh, I believe I counted 18 stations, uh, 19 uh, counting uh, Billy over in London and myself. I want to thank all the stations that checked in tonight. That's what makes the net a lot of fun. And I'll close this session of the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association's weather net. We hold this net each Sunday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time using the frequency of 146.880 and a tone of 77 hertz. I'm KY4BDP closing the net at 9.06, 9.06 Eastern Time, and I'm returning the repeater back to regular amateur radio use. This is KY4 hoping you'll stick around for the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association Simplex Net at about 9.10, 9.10, 10 past the hour, which will be radio, radio communication. Have a great evening, and 73. And we closed out the net there. And the key to any net is to have fun in the hobby. 
That's the key. You know, try to, uh, to get your members to participate. Remind them when the net is going to happen. If they're new, make sure you have, you know, a calendar or maybe an email that goes out that reminds folks when your nets are going to occur, especially, again, if they are new. Our nets run anywhere from about 30 minutes to a little bit longer than that. We'll have anywhere from about 15 to 20 plus uh, participants in our repeater based nets, uh, especially two meters. So what do you need to run a net? Well, you can kind of see my setup here in the picture. I've got a couple of wide screens. Of course, I use this for regular work as well. I'm an IT instructor. But on one screen, I've got QRZ up on there. If I come across a call sign that I have never seen before, I'm going to look that person up so that I can actually call them by name. Just take your time. Nobody's expecting you to know every call sign. You'll notice in the middle right next to that I'm documenting everybody who's checking in so that I can read that back. We have categories of check-ins. We had short timers. We have uh, battery and emergency powered. We have echo link. Uh, we have mobile stations and we have base stations. And so I have categories on my list there in the middle where I can call on those call signs for each of those categories. And then on the right-hand side, you can see that I have the script that I'm going to follow. We'll actually put a copy of that script down in the description area of the video. So if you want to use this script as the basis of your net, you can most certainly do so. It doesn't have to be verbatim to what we have. I've actually taken this script from the original one that I got from our uh, club president and just changed it a little bit to make it a, a little bit more natural as uh, you uh, as you read it. And that's really the key, you know, just be organized call on all of the call signs, repeat them, let them make comments if they're not short timers, thank them for participating. You'll have a lot of fun running your nets. Well, if you've enjoyed this video, hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. We'll have a follow-up video on how to run a simplex net in the near future. For the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association, I'm KY4BDP. And we hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and 73.